Hello friends and welcome back to the Hall of Craft! I'm back with another video for you guys. And today I'm going to be crafting minecarts and tracks. But not just any minecarts and tracks, these are going to be modular. Now I am continuously inspired by this tabletop community here on YouTube, and one of the channels that is always bringing a smile to my face and ideas to my brain is Miscast Terrain. And a while ago, Trent posted a video where he made some minecarts and tracks, and that gave me some big ideas. One of the things that Trent did that got my gears really turning, and I felt so silly that I hadn't thought of it myself, was that he used EVA foam in his build. And EVA foam, if you're unfamiliar, is the stuff that floor tiles are made of, the stuff that you kind of lay out on as a mat when you work out. And it's also available in kind of big rolls like this. And the reason it is, is because it's the stuff that cosplayers tend to use when they make their foam armor and weapons props. The reason why they use it is because it's so flexible and durable when you compare it to something like uh, XPS foam, which is very hard and rigid. Uh, EVA foam is very stretchy, and so for this purpose, I thought that it would be perfect, and seeing him use it really gave me some ideas about how I could use it myself. So I have worked with EVA foam before when I tried my hand at the cosplay world making this helmet and the accompanying suit of armor. Uh, the reason why EVA foam works so well for this is because you bend it and attach it into shape and glue it along the seams. So if EVA foam is flexible and durable enough to make something like this, then I don't see why it couldn't work for making some tracks for my minecarts. Anyway, to get to why this matters to you, EVA foam is going to be essential into making this build uh, modular in the way that I would like it to be. Without it, using a more rigid foam, I would have to make various pieces for different inclines or every shape would be pretty uh, constrained to what it is. But the plan I have in my head is that I'm going to be able to take these pieces and kind of bend them to the shapes that I want and therefore I will need materials that are okay with being bent. Therefore. EVA foam, better than XPS foam in this case. But well, that's enough of my face, let's just jump right into the build. So to start out, I'm gonna sketch out some templates for my tracks on some pieces of paper. To make the modular railings for my tracks, I'm gonna need a couple different shapes because I want these to work with my tiles. So I'm thinking I can start with some straight pieces and also some corner pieces, and that'd be a pretty good starting point and I can kind of fill in the gaps from there. While I'm doing this, I'm making sure to keep my cave tiles handy, just to make sure that the sizing feels right and that my tracks are gonna line up properly. Now that I have some templates in a size that I like, I'm going to make some prototypes of the tracks to overall test the concept and use this to make sure everything flows and works properly, and this will be the phase where I kind of iron out any kinks in the build. First, I'm gonna take my roll of EVA foam and cut some quarter inch wide strips out of it and then I'm gonna cut those strips down to size for my railings. Next, I'm gonna take some popsicle sticks and using my chonky wire cutters, I'm gonna chop them into an inch and a quarter lengths. These will be the planks for my tracks. Once I have all those cut out, I'm gonna use tacky glue to attach the planks to the foam. I'm using tacky glue here because it gives a really nice strong hold and the glue more or less stays where it's put. I didn't want anything running or dripping down the sides of these. I want it to be nice and clean. Then I just place my boards into the glue. Making the corner piece was a little more tricky. While the EVA foam is fine to bend into position, it won't hold the position on its own. So I took out a scrap piece of XPS and some sewing pins, and I pinned the EVA foam into shape on my template before gluing the planks into position. Okay, now I'll leave those to dry completely, but when I come back, it's time to test the step that's either gonna make or break this concept, adding in sculpting wire. Now I said before that EVA flexes and bends really well, but it won't hold its shape. Sculpting wire, on the other hand, holds its shape really well. So my goal here is to find a way to attach the sculpting wire to my railings in a secure and mostly discreet way so that the sculpting wire will hold whatever shape I bend the track into and the EVA foam will be there for aesthetic purposes. So my first attempt here was to glue the railings on the outside edges of my EVA foam, tucking it under the lip that the planks created where they overlap on the edge. And for this, I just used super glue. I don't recommend doing it this way for a few reasons. 
The first reason was that it was super finicky to try and line the railing up properly with the track, as you'll never be able to bend the wire into a perfectly straight line, and the track itself kind of wobbles all over the place while you're gluing it. The second reason was that while having it on the outside edge would hide it better in theory, I wasn't able to get it to line up well, and that actually made the sculpting wire more obvious. So I tried it on the inside when I was working on the curved prototype. And the third and final reason was that I quickly found out that super glue was not going to be the ideal adhesive for this step. When bending the railings, some of the touch points of the wire to the railing would just break and snap off. The super glue was too brittle and it couldn't handle the pressure of being bent. But the concept still had merit and I was confident that I could address those issues by adjusting the kind of products that I was using and the way that I approached it. So I got to work on doing some math. I wanted to see exactly how many pieces I was gonna need to cut before I could mass assemble all of my tracks. This included all my different railing lengths, all my sculpting wire lengths, and of course, all of the planks I was gonna need. This way, when it came time to assemble the whole thing, I knew I was gonna have exactly as many parts as I needed, and I wasn't gonna have to stop my process to cut some more or, you know, have too many left over at the end. So I started with my planks. For the prototypes, I had just used popsicle sticks, and this is perfectly serviceable. If you're copying this build yourself, you could totally get away with using popsicle sticks. But for my own railings, I was fortunate enough to have some primo ingredients. My father-in-law made us this beautiful cherry wood top for my otherwise very standard IKEA storage unit. And in that process, he made a bunch of offcuts and he held onto them and gave them to me uh, because he figured that I could use them for some kind of craft. And so I wanted to put them to use here because they are beautiful and I figured that I could spend less time making them look like wood because they are wood. I figured they were the perfect size to make planks out of and I was going to put them to use in this build. So I took all my planks and marked inch and a quarter sections onto them with a pencil. Then using a pair of kitchen scissors, these things will seriously chop through anything, I chopped them all up into rail sized sections. Now that I had all my planks sized up, it was time to stain them. He also provided me with a little container of the stain he used when making the countertop. This stuff is called tongue oil and you can get it at the hardware store. The general process here is just to dunk my planks in it completely and then wipe off most of the oil on a piece of paper towel. Once they're looking good, I just set them aside on my baking sheet to dry while I do the rest. This works really well to bring out all the wood grain and it makes the planks look beautiful. The cherry wood is amazing and has these wonderful red undertones. So the process here is just very, very easy. So while those were drying, I totally panicked. I was so excited to get to the step and use the tongue oil and use my beautiful cherry wood that I totally didn't consider the fact that tongue oil is an oil and oil and water don't mix. So it occurred to me at this point that I might have some problems when trying to glue everything together because all of my glues are water-based, more or less, and water and oil do not mix. So it was time to make another test piece and see what I could get away with moving forward. Welcome, contestants, to Will It Stick, the game show where you find out if it sticks. On your left, we have three oiled up wooden planks. And on your right, we have their brothers, who've been two-timing with a piece of sandpaper. Our adhesives from left to right are tacky glue, super glue, and E6000. And just for good measure, we'll stick the metal dude right there in the middle. Now we just wait overnight, and we'll be back with your sticky winner tomorrow. And after an evening of wondering if I had just ruined all of my wood planks by soaking them in tongue oil, I came back to see this. Huh. But all that thought, all that energy, all that worrying that they weren't gonna stick and because I had oiled them up, every single glue worked. They all worked. Everything stuck. <laughs> Everything stuck. No problems with any of them. And the answer is, I can do whatever I want. Even the E6000 worked and it didn't melt the foam, which is common uh, criticism of E6000 is that it will melt any XPS foam you touch it to, but not EVA foam apparently. So I was in the clear to basically get away with anything I wanted to do. So with my newfound confidence and reassurance in the process, I proceeded onward with the build and I began cutting all of my various railing lengths. EVA foam is super easy to cut, just make sure you're using a sharp knife so that it doesn't rip and tear. 
the same way you would with foam core. I also made the decision that in addition to my straight and curved segments, I was going to make some connector segments. These would be just one inch sections of railing that I could use as nodes for the other pieces. After I was finished planning that out, it was time to start assembling. For this, I took a big chunk of XPS foam and I traced out all of my templates onto it. This would help immensely with the assembly process. Once that was all traced out, I pinned all of my railings into position on their assigned seating, and then I just started blobbing tacky glue out where it needed to be, and then pushing my planks into position. It got a little trickier when I ran out of pins. The pieces started moving around a lot more on me as I was putting the planks into place. Once they were all dry, I removed them from the XPS foam, and I started cutting out my wire lengths. To attach the wires, I'm using E6000 because it worked so well on the prototype. For this, I just use a toothpick to apply the glue on the back of the planks and then place the length of wire into position. I'm using a lot of glue here. Normally I would try to be a little more delicate and precise with how much E6000 I use and where I put it, but I'm doing this intentionally so that when it dries, it's going to have a more sturdy hold as I'm gonna be bending these and moving them around a lot. I'm giving up a little bit on the aesthetics of having visible glue, but I, it's on the bottom of the track, so I don't think it's gonna be such a huge issue, and I'd rather these things stay together than look super, super professional. The curved pieces are a little more tricky to get the wire to line up perfectly, but just be patient and you can get a good result. While those are drying, I want to use my excess wood planks to make some structures to round out my modular set of mine tracks. I'm going to start by cutting some squares out of a scrap piece of black foam core. And once I have those ready, I'm just going to take my kitchen scissors and start chopping up my planks to length and gluing them on top. For the pieces that I intend to be the bases, I will just glue them on the sides. Once those are all dry, I'm going to glue sides onto the top pieces as well. This completely hides our foam core bases. While these were drying, I wanted to add some more detail to all of my tracks. I was thinking a lot about how railings actually work, and that the planks are on the bottom, not the top of the track. But I couldn't just have them on the bottom because I needed something to hold them together if they were going to have any height to them. So I decided I was going to add a second piece of EVA foam along the top. And this piece was actually going to function like the railing for my tracks that the wheels of the cart would, would stick onto. And everything that I had built until this point was basically the structure holding the track together. So just using more tacky glue, I attached my new railings to the top of all of my tracks. Once they were dry, I just trimmed off any excess with my wire cutters. Okay, now that that was finished, back to my structures. It's time to add some height to this build. I just took my planks and cut them to a length that felt right for my nodes, roughly three inches or so. Then using super glue and accelerant, I started building the structure for these. Four pillars, and then eventually some diagonal supports. I didn't really have a plan for these, I was just kind of keeping it loose and doing whatever felt right in the moment. In hindsight, I probably could have gotten away with using hot glue to build these and saved myself a boatload of accelerant, but it, like I said before, brain was turned off for this step. Before attaching the tops to the pillars, I wanted to cover up the exposed foam core on the base with some rocks and sand. Maybe the miners pile up their minerals here, or maybe it's just a dirty mine and they can't help but cover everything with debris. Either way, I just cover it with white glue and then toss my sand and rocks into it and let it dry. So I've talked a lot about how I want these to be modular and how I'm going to make them modular, but I haven't talked a lot about how I'm actually gonna attach them together in practice. So let's take care of that now. The solution is pretty simple. I'm gonna cut out some inch by half inch foam core rectangles, and these will eventually hold magnets. The magnets will be what holds all of my tracks together. So I'll just sketch them all out and then cut out my rectangles. Once I have a pile of those ready, I need to attach them to my tracks. For this, I'm going to stab some toothpicks through them at the same width of my EVA strips. Then I clip them to size and remove them from the foam core. I take my tacky glue back out and I fill the hole with it and then lay a strip of glue where the toothpick will sit on the bottom of the railings. Then I just press it into place and do the same thing on the other side. Repeat that process for all of the tracks and then set them aside to dry. Okay, now back to my structures. 
I'm gonna attach the tops now that I'm finished with the rocks and sand on the bases. Once those are set, I'm gonna just start adding my diagonal supports to help these be a little bit more sturdy. It also adds to the aesthetic. Now that my structures are finished, I found myself with a handful of leftover planks, so I kind of freehanded myself a tower, just going with the flow and building it without any plan. It ended up being a little bit kind of crooked and janky in the end, but I'm okay with it because it kind of adds character to it and, you know, whoever built it just was kind of half-assing it in real life, so. Just the, the NPC half-assed it as well. While doing that, that gave all of my tracks plenty of time to dry up. So now I'm going to take all my clippers and snip off any of the excess toothpicks from the previous step. Now it's time to cut a hole for my magnets. I made a little jig out of some cardstock and a toothpick, and I used it to trace out the size of each magnet onto the foam core rectangles. Then I carefully used my X-Acto knife to cut holes for them, making sure not to cut all the way through the paper on the other side of the foam core. Once all my holes were cut, I filled them with hot glue, and then using another toothpick jig, this time with a nub of sticky tack on the end, I pressed the magnets into place. Just a quick note on how I placed the magnets into these pieces. There's two magnets on each end of each piece, and I made sure that they are not facing the same polarity as each other. For all of my pieces, I made sure to keep consistent that one was positive and one was negative. The reason for this is I wanted my pieces to be completely and utterly modular. And if you place them in such a way that one is positive and one is negative and you keep it consistent on all of them, they will line up no matter which way you flip them. And if you were to do it the other way where it's positive, positive, and then you have it not lining up the other way, they will they will fit in one orientation, but if you flipped it around the other way, they will no longer fit. But so, to try and explain this a little more simply, if we have A, B, then we have B, A. And it will always line up because A, B flipped around is B, A. Does that make sense? It's a little bit of like a mind confusing thing to think about, but just make sure that you always have positive, negative, and then no matter what, if you keep it consistent and you do it all properly, it will always line up. You may be thinking to yourself, well, that doesn't really matter for the straight pieces, I'll just make sure that it's flipped around the other way. But if you think about it in terms of the curved corner pieces, if you don't have it so that they universally line up with each other, then you're going to have to make left corner pieces and right corner pieces because you won't be able to just flip them around the other way from each other. So, because it can flip no matter what way, this can be a right turn or this can be a left turn. So just keep that in mind while you're putting in your magnets. Give some thought to the polarity of them uh, and just draw it out on a piece of paper if you're getting confused. That's what helped me. Now, instead of carving up the top railing pieces I glued earlier to make them look more rounded, I'm just gonna use a lighter and singe them into shape. EVA foam reacts really well to having a little bit of heat, so this step is super fast and easy. Just make sure not to melt them too much. So I wanted to try and hide the magnets while also giving them a little bit of protection from the elements. So I cut out a bunch of rectangles the exact same sizes as my foam core bits out of regular printer paper. Then I just painted some white glue over the foam core and the magnets and attached my paper rectangles. After those dried, I used a small brush to apply the black magic base coat over my foam core and the exposed toothpicks on the bottom. I wanted to get away with as little painting as possible as to not risk messing up my cherry wood, but I figured the durability of the black magic base coat would really help. While those dried, I tackled the mine carts. For this, I just used some mounting board. This is for mounting artwork and it's basically just really thick poster board. I drew out a base and some walls and then cut it out and scored it with my knife and folded the walls up. I wanted these to be big enough to fit a couple small miniatures in it, but not comically large. My first attempt was a little on the larger side, so I drew another, which I was much happier with. I repeated that one three more times. I folded them together and sealed the connecting corners with a bunch of super glue and accelerant. For the wheels and axles, I used toothpicks and googly eyes. I just super glued the top of the eye and then pressed a toothpick into it, sprayed it with some accelerant, and then repeated for the other side. 
This worked really well and made sure that all of my wheels were exactly the same size and shape. Then once they're ready, I just glued them to the bottom of my carts. Now I just base coat the carts with more Blackmagic base coat. I wanted to have a way to fill my carts with rubble, but also be able to remove that rubble if the cart was supposed to be empty. So I traced my carts out on a foam course square, and then I filled the traced areas with glue and sprinkled sand into it. I let the sand dry for a while, and then I came back and did the same thing but with rocks, just building and layering it up to give it a little bit more height. While that was drying, I busted out my craft paints and overbrushed all of my carts with gunmetal. Using a smaller makeup brush, I overbrushed all of my railings with gunmetal. I was being very careful as to not get any paint on the wood, but I totally got some on the wood anyway. I think it's inevitable. After I was finished with that, I mixed some metallic white into my gunmetal and I gave all of the metal that I just painted a dry brush highlight. Okay, so at this point you could probably call it done or very, very close to done, but as usual I added in a totally unnecessary extra step because I wanted to try a new technique. That new technique is using oil paints. I have been seeing so many people using oil paints and the results that they achieve with it just looks so seamless and so easy and so effortless. So I was like, I need to get my hands on some oil paints and see if this is just movie magic or if it's real. So. I got some oil paints and some white spirits. That is the stuff you need, white spirits. A lot of people say it and I had no idea what it is. People are like Bard's Craft are telling me to get white spirits. I had no idea. I googled it. It's like, oh yeah, turpentine or seed oil or whatever. I've never used oil paints and I was very confused. So it took me a little while to figure out the stuff that I need, but I eventually found it. And it is this. This is the brand. I'll hold it up for you. It's this Mona Lisa stuff. It's called White Spirits odorless paint thinner. That's what this is called. Here's the bottle. This is the stuff that you need to use oil paints to thin it and make washes. It also is the stuff you need to clean your brushes. So it kind of double times like that. Uh, it says it's odorless. It is very odorless, but I've heard that oil paints have a bit of a noxious fume to them. So make sure you're in a well ventilated area. Although we're not very using very large quantities here. We're not painting a whole canvas. We're just painting like a you know, a thin wash over some minis. So I used it and I didn't die, so here we are. So for this, I just mixed a wash out of white spirits and black and brown oil paints. And I also had a little container on the side with just plain white spirits in it. Using a brush, I coated everything in my oil wash and then using this chunk of sponge glued to a popsicle stick dipped in the white spirits, I wiped any of that wash off the higher areas or any areas where it was kind of weirdly pooling. This worked super well to grime up all of my tracks, but it also did an amazing job on all of the wood and really brought out the grain. It made it look much more like the kind of stuff you would find in a dirty, filthy mine shaft and less like a bunch of, you know, clean wood you just bought from the hardware store. And the oil wash, I was pretty impressed with. It worked pretty well. It, it definitely finds those nooks and crannies. It's super watery. It goes into the recesses much more than something like a Nuln oil would. It doesn't tend to pool on the high areas very much at all. And it, it worked pretty well. I'll probably use it again. Uh, it does take quite a long time to dry though. Uh, definitely leave it for like a full day. I came back a little bit early in the process and I felt like it looked dry and I touched it and like rubbing it rubbed off some of the oil paint in kind of like a dusty way. So uh, even when it looks dry, it might not actually be dry. It's got a cure for like a whole day. So keep that in mind if you're to do this in your process. But after that finally finished drying, I just had one final step. I took some tacky glue and I glued some of my node railing pieces onto the top of my structures. These will help add some stability when using more elevated railway structures. Oh, and I also chopped my rubble squares out of my foam core slab and I cut them at an angle so that they can just pop in and out of my carts as needed. But now that's actually it, it's done. Build complete. Off script here but I just wanted to show you guys some footage of just how flexible these railings are and how you can pretty much bend them into whatever shape you need. They're super, super versatile. I'm really happy with how this turned out.
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you can find something in here that'll help you in your own projects. I will see you guys soon in my next video, but in the meantime, I have plenty of other crafting and painting videos that you can check out. Have a great week, everyone. Hello, friends, and welcome back to the Hall of Crafts.